Home Assistant 2022.6 is out, so let's talk about what's new and what's changed in any breaking changes. So let's get right into it. So today we're talking about updates for 2022.6 and Home Assistant. And the first one is comparing data energy in the dashboard. So what you can do is take a range of dates here or a range of data, and you can compare the data to previous data. Now I don't have solar panels. I don't have all the cool stuff that all the cool kids have. So I don't have a lot of use for this, although I think it's very useful for those. And I wish I had solar panels, but I don't. So I only can measure what I am using and how much energy I've spent, but you still can compare it. You can compare the data from the past and you'll see it here on this screen. So energy usage of this week, compared to the week before. Now there's no date picker selectable with this. You just choose the date or the range you want and then compare the data and you'll see that on the dashboard here. It also works for other graphs. The screenshot below here, this one shows solar energy production for today compared with yesterday. Again, if you have solar panels, then this will be useful for you. If you don't have solar panels like myself, then I don't have a solar production, but all of the graphs within the energy, um, energy screen will be able to be compared against each other. Next up, logbooks. Logbooks have had a significant overhaul. They are optimized now, lots of data processing optimization. They load faster. Uh, it makes it a whole lot better experience. If you've ever tried to load a logbook and you waited and waited and waited and waited, this would be a huge improvement. Also, logbooks are now real time. So if something is happening while you're looking at your logbooks, then it will update in real time. It's shown on more places, including the device and area pages. You can instantly see activity for a specific device or in specific areas. And it's now live. Like I said, you can see events live on your screen. In addition to that, if you go to the logbook page in Home Assistant and you set a future date for your end date here, you will see all of the information coming in in real time. You'll also be able to see if you have any noisy devices. If something continuously updates, such as an ESP home sensor or an update sensor, you'll be able to see it coming in here real time and you'll be able to troubleshoot that. Uh, so far, I don't see like I have anything major going on, but you do see updates as they come in. It also shows device events for things that don't have logs, like button presses. So here's some examples here, the decons, the M1 control, Hue, Cassetta, etc. So it'll be helpful for you to troubleshoot things if you need to using the logbook entries. One of the really big ones for this release is streamlining the OAuth 2 experience. There's a lot of stuff that uses OAuth in the world. And if you use, if you uh, use something like Facebook to log into other um, accounts or Google to log into other accounts, it uses an OAuth type setup. One of the big things with that is the OAuth redirect URI. And if you've watched any of my older Nest videos, this was an issue where you had to have the redirect set up correctly. You had to have your system available for the OAuth to talk to it, which means you had to open ports and a whole bunch of other stuff. This has now been corrected or not corrected, but updated in Home Assistant so that you can do all of this through the UI. Alan Porter has added support for managing OAuth 2 application credentials directly from the UI. If you go into Home Assistant, the integrations page, you click on the three dots, you'll see application credentials. And from here, you can see which ones have been imported already from uh, the configuration.yaml file. For me, Google Calendars and my bot back have both been updated. And then if you add, uh, you can add an application credential to any of these right now as well directly in the UI. So no longer do you have to go through and do everything in, in YAML or any of that. You also don't have to set up the redirect UI. It all can be done from the UI. All right, so the calendar triggers with offsets is up as well. Uh, you can do things like uh, notification the evening before trash day, birthday, remi birthday reminder a week early, or even a reminder 15 minutes before the meeting. So you can do all of this uh, through calendar triggers and calendar offsets. You can see the offset right here. Uh, this is 15 minutes before for whatever this event is. There's an improved scene editor now. They're, the scenes are used for restoring states to multiple devices or, well, we know what a scene does, right? You can do a lot of stuff with different scenes. It used to be that you had to use the entire device in a scene. Now you can actually use just specific entities from a device. So that has now been added to Home Assistant. 
it's just a small improvement, but um, something that will make the user experience a little bit better for you if you are a powerful or a uh, big scene user. Here's another big one, database performance. This release builds on database improvements back from 2022.4. Disk writes have been reduced to preserve SD card lifetimes. New APIs have been added. You can get historical data to the front end even faster than before. So you have an additional size reduction from 25 to 40% for most installs, even after the optimizations from previous releases. They do that by storing events more efficiently. And one of the big things that was brought up during their live stream is make sure that if you are one of those who do not update until way in the future, you're three or four releases behind, we recommend or Home Assistant recommends that you update this uh, to this release because you're gonna miss out on some of the future database changes. And at some point, those changes will have to be made in order for things to work. So you need to go ahead and just make sure you do an upgrade. As always, before you do the upgrades, read the breaking changes because you don't wanna break a bunch of stuff. Also, if you're three or four releases behind, your breaking changes will be significantly more than just updating on a regular basis. So let's talk about other noteworthy changes here. I'll go through a few of these. System Health now shows the database information, including versions and estimated database size. So under System Health and Home Assistant, you can see your database engine and your size, and then what the other information is related to it. Preload camera setting is now available in the entity settings. This prevents unintentional toggling. If you preload a camera stream, stream and you toggle that box on, your camera stream is always being preloaded in Home Assistant, even when you're not on the page. So when you pull the page up, the camera displays quickly. However, that can overload net the network or cause a lot of overhead when you don't really need it. So now they've taken that away to put it in the entity settings so you don't accidentally turn that on and leave it on and running in the background. Material design icons have been upgraded. 100 new fresh and really useful icons. There's now support for the media browser in GStreamer and VLC media player integrations. And the YAML tab has been the move to the, the first tab shown in developer tools. Apparently a lot of you have asked for that. If I go into developer tools here, the YAML is now the first item here rather than the last item. I'm not sure what the benefit of that is, but it has been asked for and they went ahead and did that. So there you go. If you have a ring doorbell, you can actually make the ring doorbell go off. The notification go off if you want to, for whatever reason, that's available. Tasmoto covers support tilting, uh, QR code integration works on all installation types, and so on and so forth. So a really quick overview of some of the breaking changes. I'm not gonna go through all of these. I encourage you to read the breaking changes before you do an upgrade. Always do that, always do that, always do that. I can't stress that enough. MQTT is a big one here. The, the uh, manually configured MQTT entity should now be defined under the MQTT key instead of the platform key. This is how it used to be. You would start with sensor and then platform MQTT and then the rest of it. Now it needs to be specifically MQTT and then sensor and then the rest of it. Uh, that is currently being deprecated. It will be removed in 2022.9. So you have until that version to make these changes. If you upgrade to 2022.9 before doing this, then probably your MQTT stuff will break. So make sure you're updating that as you go. By the way, there's a lot of breaking changes that show as deprecated to be released or removed in future uh, versions. So always read these, even if they don't affect you today, they may affect you in the future and you need to be prepared or your configuration needs to be updated and prepared for those upcoming changes. Uh, what else we have? OAuth reauthentications. Uh, Home Assistant will now use my Home Assistant to redirect OAuth callback over. If you need to re-authenticate with an existing application, you might need to adjust the external application configuration. So just make sure that you're aware of that. Anything you configured in your uh, configuration.yaml will be pulled into the OAuth credentials automatically. So make sure you're aware of that. Uh, here's some stuff. If you run Docker or anything like that, make sure you are not specifying an init process. Google calendars, uh, again, OAuth credentials is being migrated via the UI. Your existing application credentials are automatically imported. Uh, so that's not necessarily a breaking change, something to be aware of. A lot of these in here are related to OAuth changes. So just read through those. Uh, logbook, 
The stop and start event were fired within the exact minute we previously showed as re restarted. Um, the change eliminates the inconsistency. So if you're doing anything with this restarted uh, in automations, you'll need to make sure you update that. Under version, the board's Intel Nuke or NUC, Raspberry Pi 1 and Raspberry Pi 0 are no longer supported in Home Assistant OS. They're not, also not available in the version integration. Remove the version integrations for those boards. And then I want to talk about ZWaveJS. Always make sure that you've updated to the requisite or required versions of Z-Wave before you do updates to Home Assistant itself. So if you're using the Z-Wave JS add-on, you need to be at least in version 1.6. If you're using Z-Wave JS MQTT, that add-on needs to be version 0.41 or greater. And if, if you're in Docker, you need to be 6.10. And if you run your own Docker, you'll need to be at 1.17. So make sure your Z-Wave is updated to the appropriate version before updating Home Assistant. And then finally, the Raspberry Pi GPIO, which has been talked about a number of times in past releases, has been removed. You can find more information under the decision record of 00, uh, decision record 0019. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of what's new in Home Assistant and uh, the breaking changes. Make sure you read through this document completely if you have any questions about it. Also hit up the Home Assistant Discord channel if you have any questions. And then for me, comments down below on my channel here and on my Discord as well. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video.